This is the Cheers Podcast. Hi, everyone. This is Patrick here. Uh, Welcome to the Cheers Podcast, episode Days of Festivals. The episode is about Chower Days and Sombrero Fest, a binational celebration in respect of tradition. During the last days of Chower Days is Sombrero Fest. I'm here with EJ. We're both from Brownsville, Texas, and we have been going to Sombrero Fest consecutively now for a few years. Welcome. We want to do a little cheers. 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 EJ... Hold on, let me drink this. Okay, that's some good water. What is Charro Days and Sombrero Fest? All right, Pat, well, thanks for having me. Uh, Charro Days uh, is a celebration of the history and of the culture and of the heritage that uh, we as citizens of Brownsville have and share with our sister city of Matamoros. Uh, I have to admit that although I'm a lifelong resident of Brownsville, I know very little of the backstory of Charo Days. So what I did is I went down to the uh, Brownsville Heritage Museum and I picked up a book called Charo Days in Brownsville. And it's a pretty good book, uh, very uh, useful. It was written by some local authors and uh, University uh, University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley professors. Uh, I recommend going down and picking up a copy if you're looking for the type of reading, not a sponsor. To get into it, Charo Days uh, is a celebration usually held at the end of February. It was originally envisioned as a one-day event, kind of uh, focused at bringing tourism to Brownsville, as well as kind of giving the residents of Brownsville A reason to celebrate because, as we all know, the Great Depression hit everywhere, as well as our little brown spot of Brownsville. That was the idea at the beginning. Uh, But as soon as the Brownsville Chamber of Commerce came into the picture and started helping planning the celebration, it kind of ballooned to a four-day fiesta that was going to be held before Lent. So kind of like the way Mardi Gras before Lent, and we have a lot of big... De- that was going to be our pre-Lent celebration. But of course, we now know that. Like this year, Friday is a Lent Friday. So once the, so once the Bronzeville Chamber of Commerce got its hands on it, it did balloon up to the four-day uh, pre-Lent event. And uh, the name Charles Days is kind of... a uh, Given the coining the phrase Charo Days was given credit to J. M. Stein, who was the editor of the Browns of Herald at the time. Just so you know, tidbit. Okay, so now you're gonna tell me to ask me what's the difference between Charo Days and Sombrero Fest. I'm a dumbass, sorry. What's the difference between Charo Days and Sombrero Fest? Oh Pat, I'm glad you asked. The difference between between Charo Days and Sombrero Fest is that Sombrero Fest was created almost fifty years after Charo Days started. Sombrero Fest was started because some residents of Brownsville, both uh, out-of-town residents and in-town residents of Brownsville, felt that Charo Days kind of lost its magic. There was less pageantry. There was less celebration. They noticed uh, fewer and fewer people wearing uh, the Charo costumes. And so in 1986, uh, the Sombrero Fest was created by brown, uh, private citizens uh, with the with the hope of enhancing the spirit of Charo Days. So Sombrero Fest, as we know, as you and I know, and now everybody else knows, is a pretty big party with a couple of stages, a lot of food, a lot of drinks, a lot of fun, uh, both for uh, families and just adults. Okay, well, for the listeners uh, not from here, what do, if you're going to give them some advice or if you're going to be there with them, what, what will you tell them to expect? 
Well, for child days itself, you can expect to be, you can expect to spend some good quality time underneath the Texas sun. Uh, come early to the parades. Come early. Uh, get your seats in case you don't want to be standing up. Uh, have some cash in case you want to buy some uh, some dulces, some tamarindos, or some uh, cotton candy. If you're going to be going to the Sombrero Fest, I suggest maybe a taxi or an Uber or a Lyft. And I suggest you come with at least a good two or three hours to really get the, get the feeling of Sombrero Fest. And that's a day. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and maybe not so much Sunday. But you should definitely, if it's your first time, you should definitely try to get the three-day uh, Sombrero Fest experience. Yeah. Well, I remember going to this... Uh the days leading up to Sombrero Fest. And I don't know, I can't remember the name properly, but it's something, the Sol. Or... That's right. Uh, the the first Sunday that uh, the Charo Days uh, week opens up is called Baile del Sol. Baile del Sol. And that uh, you get your first uh, food eating contest there at the Baile del Sol. I think they eat a taco or a couple of tacos. Mm-hmm. And you also... A taco eating contest? Exactly. A taco eating contest. And yeah. you also get to see the first uh, dances uh, that are put on by the youth, by the children of BISD. It's also an important uh, part of the overall Charo Days uh, festivities. Festivities. Yeah. Um, well, when was the first time you started going to these festivities? Well, the first time I was involved in Charo Days, I gotta admit I don't remember, but there are plenty of pictures of me in a Charo outfit with a pencil and mustache. I think I was five. And I danced uh, with uh, UTB, the Early Childhood Development Center. And then uh, after that, uh, my parents, after that, I would go with my parents to the Sombrero Fest and uh, occasionally the parades. Do you have to participate in the parades uh, when you went to school? The only time I had to participate in a parade with school is one time with, uh, with Joey. Yeah. And we got asked to impersonate some oh you too right oh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh yeah i have this story yeah about impersonating yeah patrick you, you're better one telling the story oh yeah this actually happened i impersonated billy garza at a some but a, a child a child day parade. parade yeah and because he was away for i think a religious uh trip or something i, I forget what the specifics are but I basically got convinced by his team to kind of like, oh, you're you're like one of the other white guys in town. You, you two are both a fair complexion. Fair a, fair, complexion. a fair complexion. Just wear this hat, put the sunglasses on, get on this uh, back of this trailer, and just wave at the audience, and and people will think you're Billy Garza. Which, yes, people waved and thought I was Billy Garza. Yes, that, so that was really the only time that I ever had to be in the parade, and because Joey and I had to carry the uh, big quarter P flag. Dude, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Surprise, Charo days. Char Char Charo days. That's some of the mystique of Charo days. I yes, guess. Re story. remembering what you thought you had forgotten. I think I was in high school and I did that, and he was also in high school. Was wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. We were actually freshmen. I was a freshman. Yeah. He was a senior. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> well, um, I, that kind of took me off guard too. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, that story. Well, but, but I would say that that is kind of like what Charles Days is, uh, kind of like trying new things. Maybe, yeah. maybe you want to be in a contest. There's some contests there that are held uh, at the Sorbetto Fest. Well, yeah, there's the Grito Contest. There's the Grito Contest. Um, I haven't tried that one. I'm always here to, to do that one. But um, there's also the Beer Contest, which I have tried three times uh, since uh, coming back uh, from college into Brownsville. So, won once. Won once. I won once on the second try. Yes. 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 It's, uh the first time I didn't have a beard and I got a really loud apl applause from my friends and but no the, the other guys won because they had beers and one of them was my neighbor so his beard was pretty dope that's good uh, he looked like Santa Claus um, 
second time i definitely grew out my beard i let it i let it grow it, uh, i made this into like a tradition of mine and i let the the beard grow for like a, at least a year i of course i trim it but i I will basically announce I'm like I'm gonna go and do this competition, see what happens. When I lose, I'm just gonna shave it off afterwards, and uh, and that's it. Because I always had the beer, so I was like, let's see how this goes. And sure enough, I had like a good um, amount of support, and I entered a competition, oh, the category in the competition that had nothing to do with my beard. It was like the longest whiskers, and the guy who had actually pretty. Mm, I can't even say the word, but immaculate or man, really immaculate, immaculate. Uh, it was an immaculate beard. Yeah, it was beautiful. I, I was like shit. He, I think he whack, put wax or something. He just some Harry Potter stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, and not only that, he had like this really nice um, black dre- uh, kind of turn coat or tra- train coat or okay. raincoat, right. okay. something like that. Well, that is also a good point to bring up in Charlie Day. Sometimes it's super cold. Oh. And rainy, and then sometimes it's very muggy and mosquitoy. Oh yeah, yeah, you have to watch out with that. Uh, I always take a poncho with me because uh, it has been consistently cold. I remember one year I had to buy, I think it was like a four foot in diameter sombrero. Uh, it saved my life. It saved my life. Yeah. So I go into this competition, and one of my friends Joey has this comical size sombrero fest which I think EJ you just described the size of it and I put it on myself with a poncho I get up there and I don't know what the hell I'm getting myself into and I realize that everyone who's going up there is already doing this little dance move and I'm freaking out I have no idea that I'm supposed to do anything I thought you just line up like a little like a pig or something and a farmer picks you. Yeah, like an assembly line. I'm an assembly line. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the yeah, best. it's like this is straight up just rational thought going on. There's no emotion. You don't have to woo them. Like, but no, yeah, you have to woo them. So, I am trying to think what the hell I'm going to do. And everyone's doing this like dance move, kind of like they have really good hip movements, and I can't, I can't compete with that. So, at that time, I basically flashed the judges, but I, of course, I just picked up my poncho. It, it was a very PG uh, flash. Yes. I did that, and I got me 100 bucks. I clapped. Yeah, I was, I was, one, I was not expecting what I was going to do. I have no idea what I was going to do. I was just like, shit, I, just got, I need to do something. Let me pick up the poncho. I know I, I've never participated in any of the contests, but I know that another Joey and also another friend, Monty, they tried their hands at the Grito. Oh, yeah. But it's crazy because when we were, you know, researching for this for this episode, we came across that the grito was actually done by one of the founding fathers, if you will, of the Charo days, and it was his yell with a Mexican twist. So it's kind of cool that the contest kind of comes from that instead of just a run of the mill. Mexican yell. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. There's been multiple uh, amigos. And I guess, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but like, explain that amigo, uh, Mr. Amigo. The, the Mr. Amigo, uh, kind of like the Sombrero Fest in a way, the Mr. Amigo was, uh, they, the Charles Day's uh, organizers wanted to kind of highlight a Mexican citizen that kind of exemplified the kind of friendship and uh, good feelings and goodwill that 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 Charles days was all about and so they began uh getting actors and actresses from mexico uh, in this role of mr amigo kind of like an ambassador the ambassador between mexico and the united states during this time and uh there's been quite a few famous people uh, i think uh, one of the very first ones was cantinflas oh that was that was crazy to 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 hear. Plus. Wow! And I think this year is Pedro Fernandez. Who's that? His dad's Vicente Fernandez, the one with the dark eyebrows. Oh! Oh! Or wow! The, for real? Or the guns on the side? Oh! I didn't know that. Sorry. See, I don't keep up I hope with I'm that, right. that music. And well, me neither. <laughs> well, that's us. That's us. It's okay. But I hope I'm that. right. I hope I'm right. I hope I'm right. Our bad.
Pedro Fernandez, who is Mr. Amigo this year, is not Vicente Fernandez's son. Interestingly, though, the stage name of Pedro Fernandez is a combination of names of Pedro Infante and Vicente Fernandez, two of his favorite idols. Hashtag the more you know. Like, this is the best part to appreciate this town. Exactly. Just like last year was Intocable. How many times have we seen oh, Intocable? Oh, my God. Intocable. Great. It was It was bumping. That show was bumping. Yeah. Um, there was, I think, also uh, Chavo de Ocho. He came, I don't know if he came and visited I don't know. We yeah, saw that Chavelo guy. Chavelo. Is that, is that we're talking about Chavelo. It looks like him. Tell know. us in the comments. Chavelo, Chavo de Locho. Yeah. Wow. You guys tell us about that. Okay. I'm switching over to Joey, a good friend of mine, to talk about a little more Trower Days and Sombrero Fest. Joey is from Brownsville, Texas, and is currently living in Uvalde, Texas. He's visiting, and I got him to come by and talk to us about these days of festivities. This is uh, Patrick Everett from Cheers Podcast. I'm here with Joey Trevino. Hello. And um, we're still experiencing Sombrero Fest. We're going to be going out there tonight, yeah. hopefully in the next couple of minutes. I brought in Joey into the studio to discuss a story that I, I have some faded memories of, and he has a little bit more detail than the previous recording that I did with EJ. So... I'm going to right now pass it along to him. It is a Charo Day re- related story. Uh, Joey, what's the story? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, I just kind of want to say that I'm extremely excited to be doing this. Awesome. I'm a, a really big fan of Charo Days and what it stands for and how it brings a community together. I went out downtown today and traffic is horrendous because of all the people from town that go to these events because... They have so much love for the event, and uh, I don't know. It's something that I'm very proud of, being from this area. Yeah. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and tell this story. So I guess the year was my freshman year of high school, our freshman year our of high freshman school. freshman year, yeah. We were, uh, you know. I think that was 2003. 2003, 2004. Mm-hmm. So it must have been Charter Days of 04. Yeah, Charter Days of 04. Um, that year, our football team was experiencing a season like we'd never had before. 30 plus years of a football program, we had never even had a winning record, which is probably a record in itself, (laughs) which is pretty hilarious. Uh, anyway, Porter has never been known for having a good football team, but that year we came in and, uh, we were riding the back of one player in particular. I mean, I don't want to say that the rest of the team didn't have anything to do with it, but the leadership of that team came from this one guy, Billy Garza. He was a senior on the team, big football player. I mean, it was, it was a everybody, big deal. you could tell it was a big deal. It was something different that the school hadn't seen, and the school was really rallying around. Yeah, the whole town. Basically, around, yeah, around him. I mean, you would go into different towns and you'd go and, and you'd see signs that would say, like, Billy the Kid, get out of here. And I mean, everybody, I mean, the whole valley was watching this guy, Billy, mm-hmm. play football. And it was a, it was a very big deal. Um, a little bit of a, more of a backstory. I remember we went to the playoffs that year. Mm-hmm. We made, we went to go play one of the Corpus teams. And on the drive up there, I was listening to the radio, and there was people calling in from McAllen and from Mission and from Westlaco and all these people that were driving up to Corpus to see Porter play in this playoff game because it was such a big deal. Like, the whole valley was rallying around this this team. I mean, it was giving them something to celebrate. Um, so anyway, that was pretty... A, a really great year. We didn't, you know, go past that week, but at the game there was... Letterman jackets from all over the valley. There was just a lot of valley pride centered around this guy. So anyway, Charo Days comes up, February. And uh, Billy Garza was actually spending that Charo Days weekend at an official visit to Illinois. Um, Our coach, excuse me, I'm going to take a big breath. (sighs) You can edit that out, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll leave it (laughs) 
Um, our coach, Jim Helms at the time, he was an assistant coach who had, at that school, at the University of Illinois, I think, he had some ties to that school, so he had scouts looking at Billy Garza to go play Division One football. So that weekend, he had a an official visit scheduled for Illinois. So he was out of town. Well, the football players had a float that was put into this parade so that they were all going to ride down the street. Because, I mean, like I said, it was such a big deal. I mean, everybody had rallied around this team so much that, of course, they had their own float in the parade. I mean, they were Brownsville, like, celebrities at that point. Well, who's the biggest celebrity on the team? Billy Garza. And where is he? He's out of town. He's in on an official visit to a university. Well, this is where it gets really good. There's one other guy at our school who just happens to be similar build, similar um, hair color, similar height, just, just happened to fit all the categories. And that was our friend Patrick over here. Um, at, Patrick might not think about it, but to people in the valley, they might have been twins. <laughs> So, we, I don't know why I was there. I really don't know why I was there. But I was standing near the float, and I had the porter flag. Yeah. And so we were on the float. I don't, like I said, I don't know why I was there. But all of a sudden, the football players looked over, and Patrick was standing on the, like, at the beginning of the parade route on the edge of the street. And they looked at him, and they said, we need that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they, they got Patrick and they said, Patrick, get over here. So a lot of people that know Patrick know that he um, always wears a red Philadelphia Phillies cap. Yeah. Or I don't know if, he's still, if you still wear it very often, but back then... He, I used to wear it. You were very known for wearing that red yeah, cap. During high school, yeah. So he put this cap on and he had sun, I think he had sunglasses... And they placed him in the middle of all the football team on this float. So they start driving down, and the people in the crowd are going nuts. They're like, Billy! Billy Garza! Billy! Hey, Billy! <laughs> and Patrick's just, like, waving at everybody, just waving <laughs> left and right, just waving and waving, and no, nobody in the crowd knew the difference. He was just like, no. And I remember looking at him. I can still picture it in my head. He was just like... Very stiff and kind of like nervous and not maybe a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Just kind of like moving his hand back and forth. So it was, but the crowd was going nuts. I mean, young kids were excited, older people were excited. They were yelling, Billy, Billy. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, the people had a, a wonderful time looking at Billy Garza on the Charo Days float. I'm surprised he didn't make the paper. <laughs> I, no one could tell the difference, but yeah, like I did the whole parade just waving, and people would come up to me saying "Billy, Billy," and I would just pretend I'm Billy, yeah, just wave back at him. And I think we had the port. I mean, because back then we had that big P flag, and the way our principal, who was Mr. Chirinos at the time, the way he set it up was like he had, he didn't want Porter to be kind of spread out through the float. I mean, through the parade, he wanted it to be like. When Porter comes down the road, you know that it's Porter. So he had like a flag in the beginning, and then it was like the the flag, and then the Estudiantina, and then there was like the cheerleaders, and then it was the band and the dancers, and then I mean every single thing that Porter had afloat in the parade, they were all back to back to back to back, and the very the crown jewel of that little <laughs> block of of Porter Charo Day's parade entries was that float with all the football players, the district by district, playoff bound, rallying together, the, foot, the Porter Nation football players float with the crown jewel of the float being Billy Garza waving at the crowd. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. It's, uh... it's to this day one of the my best child, Charles, Charles days yeah. memory. Yeah, Ch Charles days. <laughs> I had to like 
keep that in my head. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the best Charlie Day memories that I have. I forgot about that memory altogether. It's funny how EJ brought that up. <laughs> he surprised oh me on air gosh. about this story. So it was just like, oh my God, that's true. Do you it remember a, it now? Like now I, that you I, think well, back I, on it? Yeah, I remember doing it and I remember telling you about it and you kind of helped me add more pieces to it. Yeah, so these guys knew who I was on the sports side and they approached me because I looked like Billy Garza. <laughs> And it was like, put this hat on, put these sunglasses on, just wave at them. They won't see the they, difference. Oh gosh. And no, they're sure oh enough, no gosh. one saw the difference. Have you ever seen Billy Garza? You should look up a picture of Billy Garza on, <laughs> on, the, it's, on the Googlies. Him. Sorry, this is Billy Garza? Uh, Why? He has a beard? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like me now. <laughs> Wow, see, yeah, we look the same. Yeah, <laughs> not identical, not yeah, identical, not identical, but, but basically very similar. Very similar yeah. For Brownsville, I mean, that's extremely similar. That's what he used to look like. Yeah, that's that's when him. they played. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. So anyway, and I did have like the hair going like this. It was just a little bit more chlorinated. Patrick, yeah, <laughs> so it was like whiter. It was a little more bleached. It was bleached, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I was able to do it. So anyway, like I guess it was Charo Day week, Charo Day weekend, Charo, Charo Day weekend of 2016, the Thursday before we drove down. <laughs> we were at this baseball game, baseball tournament in San Antonio because Becky's nephew's on the team. It was Pace against I don't know who. So anyway, we go down to see the team at the end of the game to go say hi and say like, oh, you played so well. So we're sitting there by the dugout waiting, and who do we see? Billy, Billy freaking Garza. Garza. <laughs> Billy Garza. And we both looked at him, and then we turned to each other, and we're like, that's Billy Garza. <laughs> that's Billy Garza. And we, we just started cracking up. We just up. started it laughing. Hilarious. It was hilarious. That guy probably gets that all the time. I, I can't play down how much of a local celebrity he yeah. was. Like... Well, he was a big deal. That's the uh, one of my best, most favorite Charo Days stories, at least from the ones that I can remember. All right. Thank you, EJ, and thank you, Joey. Thanks for sharing your time and your thoughts. I hope to see you guys back here soon. Now, that concludes this episode about Charo Days and Sombrero Fest. Other episodes will be discussions about current current events as well as uh, local events, things like the Border Patrol, violence, drug trade, all the things that basically the media has this perspective of us. At the same time, my friends and I live a different reality. Our next episodes are Give Us Your Whites Only and Welfare State, but for who? Please stay tuned. And when do you come into these fl- into this festival? What do you mean? When do you come in? What do you mean? <laughs> do you go? Do I go? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Cheers podcast is produced every I don't know whenever I care for your en- enjoyment and. Uh, show notes are found i'm not doing that uh come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite uh, rss feed or itunes you could also follow me on twitter at you, you could do that and facebook you could do that uh all the links are sh- uh, are in the show notes i'm not doing that uh now let's get into the show what do you mean you're not doing that <laughs> what do you mean <laughs>